Hi, my name is Steve Jaynes. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast. This is episode number 416, Prayer and Standing in Grace. In this episode, we're going to see that it's not always easy to know what to do. We make the best decision we can and move on. In making decisions, sometimes there's lots of things going on. There can be emotions, anxieties, uncertainty, and wanting a change. Not everybody may be happy. Sometimes we find out that the decisions that we thought were good ones, but later down the road, we find out that they were not. Now, another decision. What do we do now? That is when standing in God's grace comes in to help. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the great state of Maine, we're blessed to have Reverend Steve Jaynes here to share God's word with us this morning. God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'd like to thank Steve for the opportunity to share God's word. It's always a, just a pleasure to, to teach God's word. And, it's, and you guys, I, every so often I get the opportunity to teach the Spokane believers. And I think a lot about you guys. I even have you on my prayer list. Spokane believers, I pray for you guys quite often. The, the title of my teaching is Prayer and Living in Grace. And if I had a subtitle or a human title, I would call it, it's not always easy to know what to do. It's not always easy to know what to do. We come up with our best ideas, but lots of things are involved in making decisions. Uh, Sometimes there's emotions, there's anxiety, uncertainty. You know, we got to make a decision. Are we we moving? We're doing something. And... Or we just want to change. So we make decisions. Concern, interest, and need is always involved in decisions that are being made. And so we need to really think about decisions and make the best decisions we can. To make decisions the best you can, as I was looking at Acts, is we need to do it God's way. How does God get involved in decisions that need to be made? And I'm going to go ask you to go to Acts chapter 13. And in verse 1 it says, And there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas, as Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucas of, of Cyrene, and Mandarin, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. So they had these men, prophets, right? And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, fasted is a, is a way of devotion. Sometimes you would sustain from something, you know, eating or something to get closer to God. Like you might go to a weekend in the Word or you'd, you'd spend time in your private prayer life and study of God's Word. Devotion to God. Believers take time to do that, to learn about God, to read God's word, to get God involved, like, you know, seeking first the kingdom of God. It's part of what believers do. And it says, and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted, devoted themselves to God and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. Before they made a decision, first of all, the Holy Spirit's involved. They prayed and they got God involved before making the decision. It's a great way to start off with the decision by getting God involved. Let's go down to verse 38 is where I'd like to go here. Verse 38. And what happens here, Paul gets in 
the church there, the synagogue, and he starts teaching them God's word. And he points to people like Moses and David and Samuel and shows them how they were looking forward to Jesus Christ. He was saying, see, these are your prophets, and these are the men that were teaching you to look for the coming Savior. Then in verse 38, as he's continuing to teach and he's ending up, it says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that though this man is, is talking about Jesus preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. See, that's what they were doing. That's what these men, these prophets of old were doing. That this man is preached unto you for the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. This is the start of the teachings on grace by Paul, are justified from all things, from which he cannot be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. That's why he told them all about Moses and David and Samuel and how they were pointing to Jesus Christ. You don't want to forget what they said. Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached unto them the next Sabbath. The Gentiles liked these words. They wanted to hear about how you could be justified from all the things. It doesn't say some things, all things. Now, when the congregation was broke up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. So you have the Gentiles saying, hey, I want to hear more about this. And you've got these Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in what? The grace of God. The grace of God is a big topic. Matter of fact, it was mentioned in manifestations here this morning more than once. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together for to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spake evil and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. And one of the things you got to see here, there's two groups of Jews. There's one group of Jews with the proselytes that said, we want to hear more. But there's another group when they saw the multitude moved with envy. And as you read the book of Acts, this group of Jews that moved with envy followed Paul everywhere he went. They followed him everywhere he went and tried to stop the word of God from being taught. They followed him to Thessalonica, to Berea, all the way to Jerusalem and said, here's the man that teaches against the law of Moses. And we know what happened there. But for, verse 46 says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and says, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, We'll go to the Gentiles. We all know that there was this Jew, Gentile, in the church of God. From both the Jew and the Gentile, they can believe. Believers, people of that upbringing, both can choose to believe. And when they do, they become part of a brand new group of people called the church of God. 
call the church of God. So when you don't believe it, no matter where you were brought up, you you, you refuse to tap into it. You re refuse to have it. I want to show you this a little bit more by going to Romans, which is the next book. Romans chapter 3. One of the things that happens in the book of Acts is the, the book of Acts is the book of Acts, the action. You can see the action, but in the church epistles, it's more augmented and more fully explained. Okay? And here in Romans chapter 3, in verse 21, it says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The same thing he said in uh, Acts. He says, Your prophets told you about this. It's been witnessed before. You should have known this. Even the righteousness of God, which is by believing in Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that do one thing. What? Believe. Man, the simplest thing is asked of mankind. All they have to do is believe the word. If they believe it, they get it. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So who has come short of the glory of God? Everybody. Everybody. Being justified freely by what? His grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The grace is available by believing in the accomplished works of Jesus Christ. Not much else. Just to believe that Jesus Christ did it. No matter where you come from in the world, you can, you can do it. You can be part of that. Go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. And this is my, this is my favorite verse when it talks about grace. Verse 2, when we get there. It says, therefore, being justified by believing, what's the thing we all need? Believing. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace. God is someone to have peace with. Our minds can be at peace. Our minds should be at peace. By whom we have access by believing into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. The reason I love this verse too so much is we stand in it. We don't just lucky to get out of it, you know. It's not just, oh good, I can go sin, I'll be okay. It's not what it says. We stand in it. The reason we stand in it is because we got things to do. We got things to do, and we can't be tied down or slowed down or in anxiety about sin consciousness or thinking about sin because we have the grace of God and it's available. It's just pretty, pretty neat so that we can stand. Now, we're all come short of the glory of God. We've all blown it. And, but that doesn't matter. We don't care about that. Why even why waste any time thinking about that? All we have to do is get up the next morning and say, okay, God, what are we going to do today? Let's move ahead. We move ahead every day. Let's go to Ephesians. We're going to look at some of the things that grace is about. And in verse, chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ. We got all spiritual blessings. That's part of the grace. We got all spiritual blessings. Well, what, what if we made a bad decision? Well, we know we're gonna, so forget that. <laughs> we all come short of the glory of God. If you look at the, the prophets of old, they all made mistakes. David, Bathsheba, Moses banging on the rock. 
everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> I've made mistakes. But I don't look at that. I don't, I don't even pay any attention. The sin conscious, the sin subject has been handled by Jesus Christ. It's all done. So you don't have to worry about it. According, verse 4, as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good will of his pleasure, God's pleasure. You know what that means? It was God's good pleasure to forgive you every time you need it it was his it's not like well you know i think i'll they're good most of no it was it was his good pleasure it's his good pleasure to the praise of the glory of what his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved i like that in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins so we don't have to worry about our sins. The sin problem has been handled. It's done. We no longer have to worry about that. According to the riches of what? His grace. Wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Prudence means good sense, common sense. See, we have all wisdom and prudence. We have Holy Spirit. We pray. We ask God, help us with these decisions we have to make. And we can make good decisions most of the time. It's true. We, we already know we can't make them all the time. But we can. We have Holy Spirit. We say, God, what do we need? How can we be better off? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. It says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead to sin, and hath quickened or made us alive together with Christ, by grace we are saved. This is true. This is true. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. He's not done showing you the riches of his grace. There's more he wants to show you. In the ages to come, we will see more of the riches of his grace. Now, right now, we've got grace, forgiveness of sins. But he's got more he's going to show you. Me too. For by grace ye are saved through believing, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's good. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. There was a time that I was really interested in what these good works were. You know, I would I try to study it. Look, I did word studies on good works. What are these good works? which God had for before ordained that we should walk in them. Well, part of what the good works is, what is what God has called each of us to do. We have all been called of God to do something. And we do those good works that we have concern, interest, in need. Things that we like to do to help others with the things of God. Help them get born again. Help them to see God work in their lives. And God knows what you're good at, and he lets you know, and so you can do that. You can go about doing your calling, what God wants you to do. So that's pretty wonderful. Let's go to Ephesians 4, 7. It says, but unto every one of us, another way of saying this, to each of us, to each of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. We've got the grace. Let's go to verse 29 in chapter 4. 
It says here, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building one another up, that it may minister what? Grace unto the ears. We can minister grace to each other and to other people. You don't have to go too far to find people criticizing and condemning people and finding fault with people. But what about people that minister grace to one another? Say, yeah, I know you're not perfect, but you still got things to do for God. God forgives you. Helping people with that. All right, let's go to Colossians chapter 1. In verse 3. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Remember I said this is prayer and walking in grace. Prayer is, is still the big part of it. Paul says he's praying always for you. He was talking to those believers. Since we heard of your believing in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof you have heard before in the word of truth of the gospel gospel has the truth in it and it has the truth about grace which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. What we've been reading about here is the grace of God in truth. We all blown it. We, you know, some of the greatest people in the world that I've ever seen have made mistakes. The Apostle Paul made two gigantic mistakes. He wouldn't had Christians imprisoned and had them brought to Jerusalem to be killed. Not the best decision. He goes to Jerusalem and everybody tells him not to go. But he goes. Why does he go? Well, this, he's got reasons. He, want, he wanted to be all things to all people. He wanted to go in there and see if he could help. But God told him not to go. But as soon as he saw that he made a bad decision, you know what he did? On the castle steps, he stood up and said, men and brethren, listen. And he started teaching them about his conversion on the road to Damascus. And he said it over and over again in those last few chapters in the book of Acts. It's what you do now that's important. That's why you can stand in the grace of God. You can stand in it. Okay, let's go to... Chapter 3, verse 14. Above all these things put on charity, the love of God and the renewed mind in manifestation. I like to say it like this. The love of God in your mind in action. We've got the love of God because when, when you're born again, you have Holy Spirit. It floods our hearts. We got the love of God. We learn from God's word how to utilize it and how to help people with it. And we do it in action, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with hymns and spiritual song, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. When it says, and whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean I'm giving you a piece of toast in the name of Jesus Christ. It means that we are taking the place of Jesus Christ. We're acting as though we're Jesus Christ. And the reason we do 
is because we got Christ with us. We got Holy Spirit. We got all the enablements to share the grace of God with others. We have it. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's go to chapter 4, verse 2 in Colossians. It says, continue in prayer. And like I said, prayer is and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us the door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, all for which I am also in bonds, bonds, that I might make it manifest how I ought to speak, make good decisions, right? Walking in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time, letting your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of what? Grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See, it's prayer. We ask God for help in whatever is needed for ourselves and for others. We come boldly, not hesitantly, boldly unto the throne of grace because we know about grace in truth from the gospel, from the word of God, and we can help others and ourselves when we need it. We don't have to really be all that concerned about our mistakes because no matter what mistake we make, we can get out of it. Whatever shortcomings we have, we can move through it. We have the grace of God wherein we stand each and every day for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.